In this lesson, we're going to learn how to enter scientific notation numbers into your calculator. Now, to, to watch this lesson, you really need to have a scientific notation calculator, a scientific calculator in your hand, solving the problems with me. If you don't do that, uh, you're really not going to be able to, to learn too much. This is a hands-on uh, video. Now, if you're not sure about scientific notation and, and what that means and how that works, you need to go back and watch the previous video about scientific notation to understand exactly what we're doing here. Now, in order to work with scientific notation, you're going to use some special uh, keys on your calculator. Now, you're going to notice that uh, your calculator has uh, has special keys. If you uh, take the number 2.5 times 10 to the negative eighth, for example, and you just uh, start, uh, whoops, you start typing 2.5 and then the times button and then 10 and then the exp and then the, the negative 8, you're going to have uh, probably the wrong answer. You need to use the special keys that your calculator has in order to, to work in scientific notation. So, for example, on this calculator, and I just used a, a, a Casio as an example, you're going to type in 2.5 and then instead of hitting times 10 you're going to hit EXP. The EXP button is the the special key that your calculator has to to handle times 10 to the and then you hit negative 8. And so if you do this, if you, you follow these keystrokes, you should get the right answer every time. Now, you might be looking at your calculator and not be able to find an EXP button. And that's because on some calculators, you're going to find uh, maybe an EE button instead. Or on some calculators, you'll have a times 10 to the N button. Either of these three, any of these three uh, keys, are the, the buttons that are specifically designed for scientific notation. You need to use those buttons on your calculator. Uh, EE is pretty common on TI, Texas Instruments calculators. Some of the newer calculators you're seeing the times 10 to the N button. Also some of the sharp calculators use that. A lot of the Casios use EXP. Now if you're looking for the button and you still can't find it, well it's possible that you may have one of the, the fancier calculators like a TI-84 in which you have to hit the second button and then access EE. Uh, or EXP, which is uh, sometimes on top of the comma, if you look at that. So let's look at an example. And once again, this is where you need to take out your calculator, and we're going to follow along. Now, this is what the uh, most common version of the T84 Plus looks like. That's used by a lot of high school students. And we're going to solve this problem right here, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is a scientific notation number, times... 0.5. And so let's look at the keystrokes that you actually have to type in. So if you have a TI-84, actually turn your calculator on and follow along with this. Do this problem to make sure you can get the right answer. So the first thing you want to hit is the 6, time, uh, point, o, 2, so 6.02. Don't hit the times button. Hit second, and then I'm going to highlight this because this is important. The EE button is right there. Okay, so can you see where the EE is? So you're going to have to hit the comma. Okay, so second and then the EE. Now, 23, so you've hit 6.02, second EE, 23, times 0.5. Okay, that's what you have to type in. If you type in some other combination of keys, there's a good chance you're going to get the wrong answer. So then you hit the enter, and you should get the answer. And this is what your screen should look like after you type that in. Now, I want you to notice that your calculator has a little different way of, of writing 6.02 times 10 to the 23. They display it on this calculator as 6.02 E23. Okay, that's how your calculator displays it. And when you get the answer, you have this 3.01 E23. That's your calculator's way of saying 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, let's look at another calculator. This is a common, uh, just uh, a simple Casio 
a scientific calculator. It costs a, a few dollars, and this is just as good as any calculator in, in chemistry class, at least for, for, for starting out students, for our beginning students. And we're going to work the same uh, problem. I actually like these calculators uh, more because uh, the, the process is actually simpler. There are fewer keystrokes. We're going to solve the same problem. You're going to hit the 6 point O two EXP, there's that EXP button, 23 times point 0.5 and then hit the equals button. So it's very similar to the other calculator. Actually it's a little bit easier. You don't have to hit the shift button or the second button. And when you do that you should get the answer. Now I want you to notice how 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is expressed in your calculator if you have one of these. Uh, they basically just put the mantissa, the 6.02, in the main part of the display and then the exponent in the little window. Make sure that you write it or that you understand that that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and that you write the answer is 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd. Don't write it like this. Don't, don't do this. Okay, even though that's what you see on the screen of your calculator, that's not what you want to write down as the answer. It's not the same thing. Now let's take a look at one other type of calculator that's becoming very common. And this is a, a TI-30XS, and uh, there's some other calculators that are very similar to this. Some of the sharps are like this. And so we're going to do the same problem, uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 0.5. And so you're going to key in 6.02 times 10 to the, there's the times 10 to the end button, 23. And then you have to hit the right arrow button, because if you don't do that, your calculator is going to think that you're still typing in the exponent. So you have to hit the little right arrow and then times 0.5 enter. And so it's a little bit more complex, but not much. And when you do that, you should get the same answer. This is what it looks like when you type in that problem in your screen. And so that's the same, uh, the same answer that you should get 3.02 or 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd. Now to make sure that you understand this, let's do some problems on your own. So we have the first one here. So whichever calculator you have, or calculator you have, type these numbers in. So type in 9.3 times 10 to the negative fourth plus 1.5 times 10 to the negative third. So whichever calculator you have, you should get the answer 2.43 times 10 to the negative third. If you did, good job. If you didn't, do it again. Pause the video and do it again until you get the right answer. Here's another one. Key this into your calculator. 8.44, so clear it out, 8.44 times 10 to the ninth divided by 2 times 10 to the tenth. And what's the answer? Your calculator will give you, hopefully, the answer 0 0.422. If you did, good job. If not, do it again. Now it's possible that your calculator may have given you the answer in scientific notation, which is 4.22 times 10 to the negative first. That's okay as well. Both of those are the same thing. Then we have the last problem. Key that in. 0.653 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals. And you get an answer that is approximately, and you made some round, do some rounding here, but the answer I get is 3.93 times 10 to the 23rd. If you got all these three answers correctly, or correctly solved, then uh, you should be in good shape. If not, keep practicing.